Hello everyone, my name is Juan Carlos Brando. Thank you for getting connected with us today and with attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has over 40 years of experience working in the immigration field, uh, which is kind of complicated sometimes to explain the changes and everything, but with her experience, we will be able to explain to you today what is going on in the United States and with the immigration. Good morning or good afternoon, Ms. Wong. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wong, for your time. And we know it's lunch time, so we hope that you enjoy. And although we barely see you having lunch, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're very, very busy every single day. So thank you very much, Ms. Wong. And we would like to start uh, by asking uh, what happened this week uh, regarding to the immigration field and with these late uh, last changes that we have had in the U.S. New things finally came out on the USCIS.gov web on DACA. So now for DACA, whoever got the extension of two years could keep the two years all new extension is only good for one year. And if you have um, an, an old DACA, you can do an extension of a new DACA. But if you have no, you never applied for or was granted DACA, no new DACA. Also, you can apply, apply for parole for DACA that was already approved. But the parole has to be for humanitarian reasons, extreme, extreme humanitarian reasons. So it has to be someone who is dying, who is sick, and you need to go visit. It could not be for employment basis or something like that. I, I don't think we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, oh, okay. you can hear yeah, me now. Yeah. 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 I, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so Ms. Wong. Uh, regarding to this that you just mentioned, um, the immigration field has been changing lately. And if we start from uh, the month of June, on June 24th, we had the change about the working authorization in some categories. So uh, what's going to happen right now regarding to this uh, specific topic? Okay, so August 25th is the deadline, was the deadline that we actually we had a big pizza party for our people. We had so much fun with it. Um, if you file the asylum, the 589 prior to August 25th, and you have been here for more than a year, then you can still apply for a C8 work permit good for two years after the one year period of the receipt. But if you file Asylum now, after August 25th, which is today, August 26th or 27th, then you can no more 27th. get work. 27th. You can, thank you. You can no longer get any C8 work permit if you stayed in America for more than a year. So no more work permit. That's a big change, number one. Number two is in order to file asylum after October 2nd, you have to pay $50, and the first work permit, you have to pay $410. Versus before October 2nd, there's no filing fee for asylum and no filing fee for the first work permit. Okay, yeah, that's that's one of the main changes that we have regarding to the asylum cases. Um, also, we had some ups and downs uh, regarding to DACA. Uh, what was what specifically happened with that, Ms. Wong? Yes. So at one time, when President Obama approved the, the DACA new rules, is what we call executive order, on June fifteenth of twenty six twelve, you have to be in America before June fifteenth of two thousand seven. No brief and casual departure from the United States. You have to be in America before the age of 16. You have to be age 15 before you file. You have to be born after June 15th of 1981. And no criminal records. It's pretty straightforward. So more than anywhere between 600,000 to 900,000 DACA kids got DACA. Mostly affect the Latino children. Um, then President Obama, Trump became new president, 
Obama also two years later came out with laws on 212. So for example, you came illegally, you're married to an American citizen or your parents became citizens, you can still get a green card, but you, you need to file the 212 and get it approved. Uh, that's what we call the advanced permission to re-enter United States. And then after that, you do the 601A. So 212 was approved sometime in 2018, August. 601A was approved on sometime in August of 2013. So all these new changes under Obama, and it's not like it's easy, it's very expensive. It, it's also taking about two and a half years. So when Trump came in, Trump said no more DACA, um, difficult to get the parole in place for military parents of military children. Even if you're from certain country like China, even if you join the military, you could not get the citizenship or green card. So Trump really changed that world. And now the new thing on DACA is Trump insists, in spite of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling, that they should be able to allow to get new DACA. Trump now finally announced two nights ago, no new DACA. One year work permit step two. So they're really limiting. I think they're waiting for the election. Once the election is over, maybe it's better. Yes, and yes, and hopefully more people will be able to fix their situation to have an immigration relief. And for everyone who is in the United States or that is willing to come to the United States, please give us a call and Ms. Wong will be happy to answer your questions. 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 and she will be happy to answer your questions. So Ms. Wong, we have a question here uh, that is coming through our inbox. It says, hello, I have a question for this session. Uh, me and my uh, partner are currently without status. Uh, partner came on B1, B2 and overstayed uh, we are both uh, over age of 40 and don't have any immediate family in the United States. We have been suggested that having a baby could help our case. My question is, will it make a difference if the baby is uh, had through a surrogate? Oh, surrogate. Okay, I see because they're too old to have their own babies. It doesn't matter. I really believe in instead of changing your life and your lifestyle and your dream, to fit into visa categories, we should remember always why we come to America. Who are we? Why are we here to start with? If you couldn't have babies, why push yourself and go through surrogate to have a baby just to do what they call the cancellation of removal? So are you ready to have a child? Because why bring a child to this earth when you're really not ready for it and you're just really using the baby to get cancellation of removal? So, um, so there are two levels of this question. Number one, does it matter if it's a surrogate? It doesn't matter because your baby is your baby. No matter how it's born, it's still your baby. With that, even a, a adopted child, stepchild, you can do cancer removal. But the real question I have, if I were you, is to see, do I even want a surrogate baby? What's my motive? If I really want to have children, then of course, do whatever it takes to have a child. But if it's really because of this effort, I don't think you should do it. Thank you very much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And well, if you have any other question, please give us a call, 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. So we have another question from uh, another person in our inbox. So if you have another question, uh, you can text us through WhatsApp. It's 678-650-1248, and we will be happy to answer your questions. Uh, good morning. I'm texting to ask a question. I received the waiver in the United States, and I had to travel to my appointment in the Dominican Republic in November. I was missing a document that they were requiring from me. I deposited those documents in January and my case is in uh, administrative process and waiting for an answer. Is there, an, is there any way that I can have an answer or that I can push the answer because I have my job and my family in the United States? 
my petition is through my wife who is a U.S. citizen. Yes. This is a 601A question. So basically what he's saying is that I married my American citizen. I don't have a permanent bar. My 601A is already approved. When do I need to leave America to go to Dominican Republic to attend to my visa call? Right now, he also says something about November. So I presume he already got the notice. Apparently, immigration also lose some original documents that he gave in uh, January. So make sure you, you can find that piece of document before you, I mean, you can always get it when you're down there. But um, right now, Dominican is pretty fast. The slowest right now is Mexico. Uh, depends on when he paid the $120, $325. And when's the last time he gave the DS-260? Because normally you need an update. I have some um, uh, of my paralegals who like to do the DS-260 before the two, uh, 601A approval and then amend the 260 before we go. I have other people who like to do all 260 after the 601A is approved. So make sure your uh, 260, DS 260, is, it's, uh, it's up to date and you have the tax return. Also, before you go, make sure you bring a job, your spouse's job letter. They don't care about how much money you make. They care how much money your spouse make. Unless you had a real social and you file more than 10 years of tax return, then every year you just need to make more than 5000 You're good. So make sure before you go, you need a job letter your spouse's job letter, your spouse's bank account, your spouse's tax return, hopefully is also married and separate or married and joined to prove relationship. And then uh, also uh, attach uh, a copy of the 864 with you before you go. But basically maybe another three or four months, normally after you do that, and also because of the virus, they're all, actually Mexico is still closed. A lot of embassies are slowly opening. Um, some of them are closed, but they don't tell us. They only do citizen services. They're not scheduling. Um, so I would say November is about right because it's August, September, October. Yeah, it's about November, December. Hopefully before Christmas, then you can come home for Christmas and New Year and congratulations. This is a hard thing, Ms. Wong, because people want to go back or to go uh, somewhere, uh, you know, to say hi to the family. And this has been a really, really tough year for everybody in the world. Uh, by the way, Ms. Wong, India is really in a very strong situation right now with COVID-19. And I remember that you went to India in January before mm -hmm. it was bad. Okay, so we have the next question. Um, how can I get a work permit? There are a few ways. If you're a green card pending, you can get a C9 work permit. If you're asylum pending, you can get a C8. If you're a parolee, you can get a C11. If you're TPS, you can get a C, C I think it's 14, uh, DACA, C33. So it depends on what status of your cases, you can get some sort of work permit. If you have no status, you cannot get a work permit. If you don't have a work permit in the past 10 years um, or 15 years, you cannot get a driver's license. You also don't have a social. The days when I came to America in the 60s and 70s, they will give you a social as long as you come in uh, legally. Or even if you, are, you came in undocumented in those days, in the 60s and 70s, you still get a social because in those days, they really need workers to come work in America. Okay, then that's very important. Just reminding everyone who is connected with us that we have offices in nine cities of the United States. In Cleveland is the headquarters office, uh, but we have offices in Atlanta, in Chicago, in Columbus, Cleveland, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, uh, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And you can call from any city in the United States. Is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 and we keep uh, receiving questions Ms. Wong uh, so I'm going to try to understand this question but surely you will uh, understand better than I do uh, Sean is asking can we apply for W7 IT number uh, I overstayed my I-94 and is this the best time to apply uh, W7 is what we call the TIN number, the tax ID number. Uh, so for example, you form a company, that's a W4. So the company, you form a corporation, the corporation files a W4 to get a separate ID. When I look for a job and I file W2 to get tax deduction, 
W7 is what we call the ITIN number, the ID tax return. It's getting harder and harder to get the tax ID number because tax ID number in the olden days is very much for the rich people. The people come shopping like a Saudi princess and princess to go to Saks, go to Nordstrom to go shopping. They always have that credit card and you only need the tax ID. Rich people use tax ID number. Poor people or workers like us, we need to work, so we need a social to work. So, um, so tax ID number is getting harder. In Nashville, there's a IRS that will look at your passport, return it to you, and then issue the IRS, uh, the tax ID number. But most uh, tax uh, organizations, they don't like to keep your passport anymore. But, but do go to H&R Block or any of your uh, tax accountants or something, and they could help you do the W-7. But it is getting harder and harder. Yeah, that's true, and everything it looks to to be getting harder and harder. So hopefully, we're gonna have some change in, uh, changes in the short future. Uh, the phone number that you can ask more information is two one six two seven nine three nine eight four, and you can write your questions live, and Miss Wong is can uh, answering your questions uh, while we are live. Um, this next question is from Maritza. She's saying. I am waiting for my citizenship uh, exam or test. Uh, when is immigration going to open? Okay. In Cleveland, it's already rescheduling. So if you already had a fingerprint notice and they, you couldn't go because it's canceled or something, just wait. They should give you another fingerprint notice because slowly people are coming back to immigration to work. Another good news that was announced two nights ago that immigrant CIS will not furlough the 775% people that they were going to furlough, which is nice. So these interviews will come back, depends on where you live. Ohio, where I live, is one of the best cities um, and, and it's voted the best and the fastest citizen and green card city. So about three months you get a notice in Ohio, in Cleveland. Um, and in Ohio, we have four offices. We have uh, Cleveland, Columbus, Toledo, and Cincinnati. So um, it depends on where you live. New York is running six months in some cities, nine months in others, and others they waited for one and a half years. So it depends on where. Nashville is running about nine months to a year. Atlanta, maybe a little bit longer. And also, each office is very different. You would think it's the same test because it's all citizenship. Some offices are very worried about did you ever go home? If you had an asylum, then you need to file a waiver. Um, other offices are easier. If you're old and you don't speak English, you have that medical exemption. Um, so each office has their little quirks. Even though it's a national immigration, we have 33 districts, but each office is a little bit different. So make sure you know your own district and see how they work and how they like to interview. Nowadays, you cannot even bring a guest in for the for the testing because of the virus. In the olden days, sometimes I have friends who bring in like 10 people just to sit with them and wait with them, but now they won't mention. Yeah, that's true, Ms. Wong, and it's a very, very uh, particular time that we're having in the United States and is all over the world as well. So, uh, reminding you, the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216 216- Two seven nine three nine eight four, and you can talk to Ms. Margaret Wong, who has been working in the immigration field for over forty years. <clears throat> so, Ms. Wong, this question is a, a little bit long, and I'm gonna try to read it. Um, I have a question. Uh, it's because mm, I have a citizen brother, and he applied for my three brothers in the year ninety eight. Uh, I want to know if we can do something for them and if my brother that applied for them does not want to follow up with the case uh, could another brother take over the case um, they have been here for over 10 years my other brothers have been there for over 10 years is there something we can do the case is already closed and the original petitioner does not want to uh, follow up with the application, but my other brother wants to do it. Yes, and I'm sorry about that. There are two basic questions. Number one, 
the brothers came 10 years, the petition, the family, it's a, what we call family 4 I-130 petition. I-130 was filed sometime in 98. I presume they're from Mexico because right now other countries like China, El Salvador, Guatemala, the whole world, most of the whole world is running on about 2006. So petitions filed before 2006 from sisters and brothers should be able to get a green card now. In this family, even though they didn't say where they're from, my gut is maybe they're from Mexico because Mexico is running now till 1998. The brothers are here probably undocumented for more than 10 years. So basically, if the visa petition was filed before January 14th of 1998, they don't have to go home to, to do a 601A and to do the visa call like the earlier listening from uh, Dominican. But if they're here for 10 years and the visa petition was filed after January 14th of 98, but before April 31st of year 2001, then they may or may not have 245I. 245I means that you don't have to leave the country to come back to get a green card. So that's the first issue, are they 245I? The second issue is if they're indeed from Mexico, the original petitioner has to only sign the 864. 864 is a sponsorship, and nowadays Mexico only need one year tax return. So if you do adjustment of status, you don't need the 944, but you do need to attach the 864 for the affidavit support. Even if the brother doesn't make enough money, let's assume he reports 12000 a year, but you have three families because you have three visa petitions, then the other brother can do a joint sponsorship and file the 864W and other forms. But if this brother absolutely won't even file the 864, then we may be in trouble. So number one, find out when exactly was I-130 filed. Number two, what country they're from. Number three, when did each of them enter to their perm bar. That means I have a lot of Mexicans or Guatemalans who come and go, come, especially Mexicans right next door. Um, if Canadians come and go, no problem. But if Mexicans come and go as a perm bar, perm bar means that they cannot ever get a green card through adjustment. So these are all questions they need to answer. But my gut is they should be able to get a green card if they have parents who can give them a qualifying relative to do a 601A. That's the Obama policy, not Trump. Wow, this one is uh, very, very interesting uh, how immigration is going now, how everything is changing right now. And of course, we have a lot of questions that are coming through our uh, audience. So uh, the next question, and before I mention the question, the number is 216-279-3984. And it doesn't matter where you are, you can do a consultation with Ms. Wong. Um, over the phone, over Skype, over Zoom, over FaceTime, and uh, Ms. Wong is answering all of the questions. So the next question is, people are writing long questions today, Ms. Wong. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, this person says, uh, first of all, thank you very much for this time that you are taking um, and you give very interesting information. My daughter-in-law daughter is born in the United States and she got married to my son, but uh, they took another attorney in Atlanta as their attorney and he didn't do anything. And they took another attorney and he didn't do anything as well. So um, the prosecutor uh, requested a letter and none of the attorneys uh, gave it to them so he he was sent to El Salvador for 14 months but he has been there for three years and he cannot return or he has not been able to return to the United States and his kids are needing him with origins and also my daughter-in-law uh, because he helps her financially and with the kids. Um, what can be done for them? So there are two ways to answer this question. Uh, I'm presuming the person entered undocumented from El Salvador. I'm presuming before he left, 601A is approved, but during the interview, something was missing, so he's stuck there. 
another way to look at it is even though he's stuck, maybe he's waiting for 601. So 601A approval applies to a person still in America. Everything is approved. You go out for two weeks, you come back. That's what the Dominican was talking about. This is El Salvadorian, stuck there for 14 months. So either he may have a criminal record, he needs a criminal record waiver, which should not be a problem because criminal record waiver is not that difficult. It takes about nine months to one year and two months. Once it's approved, it takes another five or six months for uh, rescheduling the, the counselor visa call, again, the second one, and now he can come. Um, I think he's stuck because apparently um, when they say the prosecutor needs something, I presume it's the American embassy counselor people who needs a letter. I don't know what that letter is um, because normally these are facts. These are not like a legal opinion because before you go, you should have already gotten the legal opinion. So maybe he can just call you later and tell you what letters he needs because once he tell you what letter he needs, I, I could tell you if it's a perm bar, that means he's stuck there for 10 years. Or if it's an expeditious removal bar, that's a five year. Or if it's a criminal bar, that's 20 years without waiver. Or he's just waiting for another waiver. Or he's just there because he doesn't know why he's there. So once you tell me what letter they need and what did they file a 601A waiver and what's the hold up? Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Wong. Uh, the phone number is 216 279 3984. And we have offices in Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, uh, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And you can call to the same phone number, 216-279-3984. And we are having another question, and this is completely different, Ms. Wong. And I would like to uh, go over another question that uh, I think people would be interested. But this question is about religious visa. This person is in Venezuela and there is an um, American pastor in the United States interested in her as an evangelist. Uh, what does she need to do uh, to get the, the religious visa and how long does it take? American embassy in Venezuela is now closed. So this is what we call orphan country. Orphan country means that they have to go to another country like Colombia um, to apply for the visa wherever he can, she can go, number one. Number two is, I presume she's talking about a religious worker, which is an R visa. R, there are two types of religious worker visa. One is an R visa. They need to be paid. So, for example, uh, I'm a Roman Catholic. In my church, we all volunteer. We cannot be paid, which means that I would not be able to come to America as a paid volunteer, as an unpaid volunteer. I cannot do an R visa. But maybe I can do a B1 visa, because I'm not working, I'm not getting paid, I'm just here to volunteer and to maybe give some lectures on how does uh, Chinese Roman Catholic live, how does um, Roman Catholic uh, now treat it uh, in China, because China is very, communist countries, they don't like religion, they're worried about the whole cult mentality and to go against, because it's a one-party rule. So um, that's a B1. So if I were her, the, the minister will have to process the R1, get the approval. In the olden days, you just need a letter, you go to the American embassy and file for R1. Nowadays, you need the R visa approval. It has to be the same denominational. So evangelical, some are non-denominational, non like a Roman Catholic is different from an Orthodox Catholic, is different from a Coptic denominational? Christian. Yes, so yeah, um, yeah that's R1. So... Uh, he or she have to go to another country, process the R and come to America. This is an orphan place, no no American embassy. Yes, and that's sad, Ms. Wong, because a lot of people are needing to, you know, humanitarian visas or to renew their B1, B2 visas, and they have been going to Colombia, which is the closest country that is uh, helping process all the uh, visa requests from Venezuela. So Ms. Wong, we are going to dismiss right now and we have a couple 
comments. Sonia is saying, excellent lawyer, God bless, uh, God bless you greatly. And then we have Irwin and he says, I have my court on October 29, Miss Wong, you are my lawyer and I know everything is gonna go well. And yeah, hopefully, um, the court is open already, Ms. Wong. Are, are, are they re still rescheduling everything? Uh, they are rescheduling everything in Ohio. They're rescheduling, they're advancing a lot of Latino cases because from zero judges to two judges to three judges, now we have 10 judges. So some of the places, Memphis is one of them, they're still not rescheduling. So aside from detained, detained means that they're in Louisiana jail and they need hearings. So that's Memphis. So each court is a little bit different. But New York is also open now. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Wong. And the last question that comes from me, uh, is there any change about the this rule that the pe people that are in the military are not going to have so much trouble to get the citizenship? Right now, there's a lot of problems on military uh, citizenship because uh, years ago, when they needed a lot of young men and women who speak another language to go to different countries to fight, they are opening their arms. So if people are willing to die for America, they should be able to be a green card and citizen. So they're not blackmailed. Now it's getting very, very difficult. Even the federal judges who are listening to these cases are fed up with it and say, what are you guys doing? You can't let people go to the military for years and years and now they're fighting for us and they can't be anybody. They couldn't get their papers. You know, so it's difficult. Yeah. That's true. Thank you very much, Ms. Wong, for all the information, for your time, for your kindness with all the people that is trying to get an immigration relief, and for that horde that is willing always to help everyone, no matter where they come from. And I hope you have a very good afternoon. Thank you. Same with Thank you, you Ms. Wong. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank you. For everyone who is connected right now, thank you so much for your questions. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and also to listen to the podcast uh, that is on many platforms. Uh, you can find it as The Immigrant's Way, and there are a lot of topics. Also on YouTube, you can find Ms. Wong, uh, Margaret W. Wong and Associates on YouTube, and you will see a lot of videos with information that you will need. And also give us a like and follow our uh, Facebook page, Margaret W. Wong and Associates. Thank you very much. My name is Juan Carlos Brando, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to call 216-279-3984, Margaret W. Wong and Associates.